So welcome. We're here to talk about running a daily stand-up meeting. And the tool that we're going to talk about to help uh, enable that is Microsoft Planner. It's a part of the Office 365 suite of applications that your company has access to. And we're going to talk about not just the tool or the features because we're interested in real life. We're interested in how we make this work for you. So um, we're going to focus on the business case, on the use case. Let me turn my camera on over here. So a little bit of eye contact, right? So to start off with, let's talk about what is the use case we're talking about. What is a stand-up meeting anyway? Well, a stand-up meeting is something that's usually used in agile teams. Uh, whether your organization is doing agile officially or not, there is a lot of benefit that you can get out of these. It's called a stand-up meeting because it's so short everybody doesn't sit down is the idea. So it's a daily check-in. It's a daily way that we can keep track of the work that we are responsible for together as a team. Everybody has their own action items that they're working on. Everybody can give an update of where they are. And everybody has an opportunity to ask questions or ask for help if they're stuck on something. So the team works like a scrum, you know, in the sport uh, uh, rugby, right? So they all work together, working together as a single unit and able to overcome obstacles and things that you're stuck on. So that's the idea of a stand-up meeting. It's a really powerful concept that you can get a lot of value out of whether you're doing Agile or not. Now, the problem with an Agile team, ideally an Agile team is all in the same room together, right? They all work in the same area. They can talk over the cubicles to each other. They can collaborate in real time all the time. However, in real life, many times that's not quite possible. Um, so mentions here, many times you can't be in the same room. That might be because some of your team is in another city, in other offices for your company, other continents even. Um, I worked in Agile teams with a team of developers in China. Um, and, you know, contributors from other parts of the United States and different time zones, different cities. Um, how do you keep things simple in a situation like that? Or maybe you're all in the same city. You all work from the same office, but right now everybody's working from home. Or maybe it's a mixture of the two because of changes that happen with the pandemic that's going on at the moment. Whatever the case is, Many times it's difficult for a team to work in the same room together, whether they're trying to do Agile or not. Um, ideally, an Agile team keeps the tooling as simple as possible. The absolute ideal in the Agile world is to have what we see in the picture here. We have Post-it notes that are put on the wall and organized in a way that makes it very easy. That way there's no tool that gets in the way of progress, no tool that gets in the way of collaboration, nothing that overly complicates things. Things are very, very caveman simple. And as a result, we focus on the work we're doing rather than the way we're tracking it. Okay. Uh, but how do you keep things simple like that if people aren't all together? If you need to have an electronic tool to do it, there are several tools out there that are purpose-built for Agile teams. Um, Jira is one of those that's grown up and built that way. Rally is another. There are others out there as well. The challenge with some of these tools, with many tools that organizations try to use, is that they're kind of big and complicated. If the situation where you're all working remotely is intended to be temporary, you probably don't want to learn a big system like that. Um, you probably don't want to incur the cost of it. So what can you do to keep things simple, to fill the need that you have in as simple a way as possible? That's what we're going to talk about today. But what if you've never really done Agile? What if your organization doesn't consider itself to be Agile? Your team really isn't that. You really don't know exactly what the term even means. It just sounds good. Right? Well, if you've never done that, this idea of a stand-up meeting can still help your team. Um, communicating as a team when you're all remote is hard, whether your organization uses Agile or not. Um, you get overwhelmed with email. You get lots and lots of meetings. Everything that would have just been a quick chat before winds up being a meeting in your calendar. Um, so how can you reduce all those things? And how can you still track the status of the things you're working on together as a team without adding a bunch of overhead, right? Uh, one of the complaints for people that are actually doing the work many times is all the extra work we have to do to track things. How can you keep it simple? That's what we're going to talk about. And that's what a stand-up meeting and planner can really help you with. So first of all, some easy tips about the meeting, about stand-ups itself. Remember we said it's called a stand-up meeting because it's intended to be so fast no one sits down. 
that means you should make it fast. This is how to be successful with a stand-up meeting. If you had a daily meeting and it winds up being an hour long every day, um, you will wear people out and it will actually wind up standing in the way of productivity in some cases. So make it fast. There are three typical conversations that are discussed in a stand-up meeting by every participant. You go around the circle and everybody says, what did I complete since our last meeting? What am I doing next? And am I currently stuck on anything? Do I need feedback? Do I need input? Do I need help overcoming an obstacle? You identify those, and then those conversations where we try to get you unstuck, those happen at the end of the meeting, not during the updates. That way, people that aren't needed for those conversations can leave and get back to work. It keeps the meeting together as a group quick. It makes it less intimidating. It makes it very collaborative and efficient. Another tip for this is that just because this is a daily one that's meant to be very informal does not mean you shouldn't be prepared. Uh, if you're the one um, leading the groups, for instance, a scrum master, for instance, if you're doing that kind of thing, be consistent, be prepared. Um, even if you're one of the individual contributors, it's important to do both of those things too. Give a little thought before you start the stand-up meeting of what things you're going to share. What did I complete? What am I doing next? Do I have tasks that I need to add into the task board uh, so that we can have documentation and talk about them without having to talk in circles about things? So do those things. But let's look at how we can use the tool to kind of streamline how your team works. Whether you're an Agile team or not, Planner is a nice, simple tool to track tasks and to do items and things like that. So let's take a look at that. I have a planner board right here in a demo environment. So the idea here is this is not a technical team, it's a marketing team. And what we have here is a planner board where somebody's created a few tasks, they've created a few of what are called buckets up here for us to be able to do, to organize the work. What I'd like to do is take you on a little tour of planner itself so you understand what it is. The idea here is it's very, very simple, very lightweight. It's almost like having post-it notes that you stick on a wall or a whiteboard. Uh, but it's done electronically so that your team can be working from anywhere. It's a shared electronic whiteboard, if you will, for your post-it notes. Now, you can have more than one. Each one of these maps to a Microsoft team in Office 365. So if your organization is using Teams, um, the team that you're a member of, each team you're a member of, likely has one board. You can also create new planner boards up here at the top, beyond the scope of what we're going to do today, though. So let's take a tour of the board itself. We mentioned these buckets. The idea is buckets are just ways to organize tasks. So you can drag and drop things back and forth uh, different ways. You can also change the order of these, right? So if we have multiple tasks in one bucket, we can order them in order of urgency or importance. That way it's clear as a team, when I finish something, what's the next thing I pick up? What's most important? Notice that these tasks are assigned to people as well. It keeps track of what's completed and not. What I would like to mention is how you might want to use these buckets. You can use them for anything you want. You can click over here, name a bucket, and start using it. Very quick and easy. If you are a Scrum team, you know, it's an official kind of Agile methodology. If you are a Scrum master with a Scrum team, I might suggest you do these for your sprints, right? This is Sprint 22. And then you can drag the tasks into that sprint as you're doing your sprint planning. Makes it very easy to keep those things organized. When you're actually working in the board, when you're accomplishing tasks, what I would suggest you do, though, is instead of looking at this group by bucket view, you change that and go to the group by progress view. Notice now, instead of buckets, we just have the things that are not started, things we're currently working on, things that we've already completed. One key Agile principle is that you keep as few things in progress as possible, right? You focus on one or a small number of tasks and get them done, move them across the board. And it's a very motivating thing for the individuals and for the team as a whole to be able to get things over here into the completed column. Feels good to do that. Um, drag and drop makes this real nice and easy. While you're working in the board, you can do things up here, for instance, to quickly highlight what is uh, assigned to a particular person. Let's say we're taking turns in the stand-up. We want to see the tasks that are, that are assigned to me, E2. Right? I can click over here and it just highlights them on the screen. If you have a lot of tasks in the board, this one's pretty empty, but you might find that the filter over here works better, right? We can filter by the assignments down here at the bottom. So now instead of highlighting, we just hide all the others. 
So a nice, quick, easy way for you to filter things down, either when you're together uh, talking or even when you're working separately to update things in the board. The other thing that's nice up here, again, in a board where you have a lot of tasks, is being able to filter. Let's say that we have dozens of tasks in the board here, and I'm looking for the one that's about a case study. Notice I can just start typing right up here, and immediately, before I even press the Enter key, it's filtered down to show me just the tasks that have these words that I'm typing up above. That's a really nice uh, trick. You can also quickly clear all of the filters in one click right here. I don't know why they didn't put the filter text blank up here somewhere at the top, but they didn't ask me, right? Microsoft did whatever they wanted to do, right? So uh, keep that in mind. On the filter menu, a quick place where you can search for something in a large board. Now, for this to work well, you as an individual and your team really need to buy into it. So as you have to-do items that you identify, maybe an email comes in that says you have to do something or a project you're working on um, gets a little more fully developed, add those in here. Notice we have an add task button. It gives you a quick place, much like a post-it note. Um, let's say this is for an email campaign. This is the September um, email campaign. Okay, notice it created a task down here, not much to it. I get a little menu here where I could do quick things, where I could add a label. I'm going to suggest to you that, remember we mentioned that the planner board is part of a team in Microsoft Teams. And that team likely has additional channels in it. Let me show you an example here. This is the marketing team in my demo tenant here. Notice we have multiple um, channels for different kinds of efforts. We have one here for email campaigns. I would suggest that you create labels in your team that match up to your channels. It makes it very easy for you to classify things quickly. You don't have to stop and scratch your head very long of which label makes the most sense. You just tag it the same way that you're organizing other things in your team. You can also have other tags. For instance, here in the labels, you might have something that's uh, for urgent, something like that. We'll talk a little bit more about those here in a moment. When you click on a task, instead of just using a little menu, I'll do that again here. Remember, we have a little menu here for some quick things, or you can click right on the task and it opens up a little larger form where you can do other things. We mentioned that you can drag and drop between buckets or progress. You can also make those changes right here okay, in the form. You can add additional labels. Notice that if you're here in the form, you can even name those labels that may not be yet. For instance, the red label, maybe I wanna make that say urgent. So I'll pick this as an urgent task. Needs to be because it's now September 1st. If this is the September email campaign, we got to get on it. Okay. Notice notes here. This would be a description. Um, if you're doing Agile, you're probably using a story format to create some of many of your things that go in your planner board. Um, you might do this the story up here. As a power user, I need to do this so that I can have this. Um, so you could do that. You might give additional notification or different description down here in the notes. Notice you also have a checklist item. This is really helpful when you're creating tasks that you really haven't thought all the way through yet or you're not ready to work on. You can start saying what's involved in that. For instance, an email campaign is probably going to be multiple tasks involved, right? So I'm going to say somebody needs to create the infographic. Somebody needs to write the copy. Somebody needs to. Um, gather recipients, um, somebody, you know, that's list cleanup and things like that. I'm trying to think of what else we might need here. Um, CSS styling for the message. You get the idea. You can quickly create a list of things. These can then be um, change the order if that matters to you. Notice any one of these, we can also choose to delete over here on the side. Quick ways you can do that. Down here at the bottom, you can add an attachment if you like. As an example, I can do that from things that are already in my team directory, your SharePoint team site in the background for Microsoft Teams. I can just add a link to something I've already published somewhere else, or I could upload something on the fly. So here, um, I'll just put in a sample document here, totally fictional text file. Right. Click OK. It's going to think a moment. It's actually uploading that into our shared team site in the background for me. I could even choose to show this on the card if we want it. So quick and easy ways that you can add additional information to the task. As we mentioned, you can drag and drop. We did that for buckets earlier, but if it's time for this to become in progress, I could just drag it over here. It's now in progress or take it back out. So we mentioned the um, 
the checklist here may be very helpful for you. These may be the things you're actually going to assign to people. Notice we have the ability to assign to members of the team up here as well, who's working on what. Very good to do, but in this case, we'll have different people that are working on all of these. So when it's time for these to begin, I could just take any one of these. I could promote this to another task. That's what this little arrow button is here. There it is. And now in this one, I can choose to assign this. Let's assign this to the full control user. Okay. I could add labels if I wanted, but we'll do this pretty quickly. So it becomes pretty easy for you to brainstorm and create what are the goals that you're going to have, the objectives in agile terminology. This may be an epic. It may be a story. And you may have additional work tasks that need to happen down here that you can plan out together and then promote them up and assign them as it's time to work. This makes a nice shared format that's easy and simple for you to track all of those to-do items that you're working on together. And then when you have your stand-up meeting through the day, you have a nice, easy way to talk about what's currently in progress, what's the next thing you're working on. If you're stuck, um, you can have things to do there too. You could, for instance, have a label that says help. Maybe that's the pink label, right? Remember any one of these we can change here in the larger form. Where did my pink one go? Oh, it's already assigned. There we go. Pink. Need help. Or stuck, something like that. Quick, easy ways for you to adapt and collaborate however your team needs to do it. The buckets work nicely. Remember, the buckets was another drag and drop view we could do out here. The labels are another way to label things. But find a way that works for your team and keep it very simple. Don't make this too complicated with a thousand buckets and a thousand labels. Make it very easy so that people really don't have to stop and think very much when they need to put the information in the board. Because that's what stops people from tracking work is when it's difficult, when they have to think about it, when it's complicated. The simpler you make things, the more likely it is to get adopted by your team. And the more it gets adopted, the more it streamlines how your team works. Now, a couple of other things to mention. We mentioned that this is related to Microsoft Teams. So your teams have channels. And in your general channel, you might want to choose to show that planner board. Notice we've got that here. The Teams channel is mostly focused on messages, right? You have conversations in here. Your stand-up meeting can be created and scheduled. For instance, you'll see that here in the calendar. Here's the stand-up meeting event. You'll notice if I go into the edit form for that, you'll see that this is assigned to a channel. See that there's a blank right here to make it part of the channel. That way, you don't really have to worry about who's invited and who's not. The whole channel has access to it. And when you do this, all the, any of the conversations you have when you're holding the meeting in the chat window, all of those show up back here in that Teams general channel uh, because that's the channel that I made the meeting in. See, here's some example conversation, including a document that was all in a previous stand-up meeting. Very easy and consistent for you to go find those notes, those things that got shared during the conversation. It's all easy. We mentioned, though, that you could add the planner board as a tab up here at the top. I've already got it done here. Notice the planner board shows up here. It looks much like it does in the browser. The way you do that is here by the plus button over on the side. You click in here, you search for planner, okay, and it'll find it, task by planner. Okay. Good, easy ways to do that. There's also ways you may find that as you assign tasks and as they get completed, you may find that the planner bot uh, starts giving you notifications up here as well to help with those and help you make sure you don't miss things that are important to you personally. So planner can have a big effect on the way you work as a team, especially if you're currently working remotely and that's not your normal mode of work. That's the case, consider it. Uh, working with teams, having your conversations in here will help you, no doubt, uh, with a lot of the collaborative work and the tracking that you have to do as a team. So let's review a bit. First of all, some easy planner tips to make things simple. As we mentioned, point number one here is to buy in. Track all of your to-do items in the team board. Um, when you have multiple places to go, you know, you're doing some things on a whiteboard or on a OneNote thing or 
in planner or in your outlook tasks or any of the you know any, if you're doing it multiple places it's less effective buy in do them all in the same place um, use the group by progress view like we talked about because it really focuses on what's the current status of these items that will really help you to keep things moving from not started all the way through to completed I suggest that you make your labels in your planner board match your team channels um, that way it's easy for you to organize things the the way of organizing things by those channels by the topics or by the groups of people that are working on those things makes sense here as well um, I would encourage you as we mentioned you can drag and drop those tasks up and down the, the board that is the way to set your importance your sequence of these try to fight the urge to assign dates to all of your tasks it feels good to have dates on things but what happens in real life is when the date for item up here at the top gets changed now all these other dates have to change too and planner is not so sophisticated as something else like microsoft project where it's going to try and ripple out date changes for you so if you start entering dates manually okay, if you do that a lot you're going to have a lot of rescheduling you have to do over time so put dates in where they're important um, but don't make that your default way of just establishing a sequence just drag and drop them in order by the way I should mention here in planner there is also a schedule view of these tasks so if you are assigning dates um, you'll find that they show up here so if I give this a start date of Thursday and a due date of Friday this is an example see how it shows up here in your board so if dates are important to the task that you're doing like a marketing team probably has deadlines when things have to go out things have to be launched there is a schedule view and those date fields in the task can be used um, to give you that graphical representation of things but I would encourage you to use just the sequencing if the dates aren't important in real life lastly use checklists when you create a task put a task up there quickly for an idea or for a large goal and then use checklists to help flesh them out you can always promote those individual checklist items up to a task like we looked at together and then you can assign them and maybe tag them differently and things like that but do your brainstorming do your early thought do your early data entry as a task and planner and then you can flesh them out more as you work easy ways to adapt planner to a scrum team if you are a scrum master you likely have some more formal needs than things we talked about here as I mentioned I would suggest you use buckets for each sprint that makes it easy for you to do a sprint planning session or a process where you can quickly identify what tasks go and if heaven forbid you have to roll a task forward from sprint a to sprint B uh, you can do that very easily there um, I would suggest if you're doing scrum it's important to estimate tasks you know the level of effort that's involved in those that's typically done with points rather than hours do that in the title of the task notice here's an example of a task title um, here I put a number of points and then I put a little tilde character in the reason why I suggest this is if you export it to Excel like it says in number three Excel makes it super easy for you to separate those points into a separate column um, you know just a couple of clicks in the toolbar up above you can separate that out and then you can do more analysis to it over time if you'd like by the way that export to Excel trick is really helpful for you as the record keeper as the scrum master uh, for the team let me show you what I'm talking about here back in planner if you're looking at a planner board okay, notice up here on the menu you've got lots of menus but there's an export plan to Excel right here dumps out current status of all these into an Excel file where you can slice and dice and do whatever you want so whether your point is to report and analyze or if your point is just for record keeping so you can compare things later or have a backup for if you mess something up uh, good way to do that export to Excel the other thing I'll mention is more of an advanced piece power automate is a tool in office 365 that can help you create these little scripts or processes that go and do repeatable things for you so you probably have some processes that are important to you around the beginning or the end of a sprint um, if that's the case power automate can help with that power automate can talk to planner you know to talk to tasks of different criteria and it can do things with him move those things other places for archiving or reporting 
or help you do bulk maintenance and bulk cleanup of casts over time if that's something that you're interested in doing. Obviously beyond the scope of what we can do in a single webinar here, but it's really powerful stuff. So as always, we wanna mention where you can find some follow-up help for using Planner. You'll notice in the Visual SP Help tab, if you're in the Planner web application, you'll notice that there's lots of help available. Under Overview, we have lots of things. There's the tip about how to search. Remember on the filter menu where you had to pull the menu down and there's the search blank in there? Um, nice little walkthrough that reminds you where that is if you forget. How you can go find other plans you may be a part of instead of just this one we're talking about for one team. How to create them, delete them. Um, how to manage your tasks and organize things. How Planner relates to Microsoft To Do, separate applications in Office 365. Um, and also, this webinar that we're looking at today is one that will show up in the panel for you too. Right now, it shows you how to register for our series of webinars. But as soon as we get the recording posted, you'll be able to find this webinar again in the Help tab in your Planner application just by looking under that webinars group. As always, also, we want to mention that you can get personalized help in these things if you need it. Um, given that your organization is already a Visual SP customer, that's how you got invited uh, or to this particular webinar today, um, you, we are likely also already a vendor for you. If your team or your department uh, wants to purchase a few hours with me or somebody like me that's an Office 365 expert that can help you apply this to real life, we're available for that kind of work. You don't have to negotiate a large consulting contract. You buy a few hours, and then we do screen shares and calls with you and help you to build something or solve a problem, give you that personalized help when and where you need it. So feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to know more about that. But let's give it a moment, and let's talk about questions you might have. Let me bring up our Q&A panel here, see if we've got anything in there. Uh, we had a question from when we were doing our demo from Jolene about can you add other custom fields to Planner? Great question. I like the way you're thinking, but the answer is no. Right? And I think they've done that on purpose. Their goal here in Planner is to keep things as absolutely simple as possible. They don't want this to, big, to become big and complicated. So your ways to customize what you're adding are by using buckets okay, and labels. Those buckets and labels are your way to do that. You can create as many buckets as you want. There are a lot of, of label colors that you can pick from here and rename them. I would encourage you to use those. Um, there are times where that naming scheme we talked about, like I did it for a point estimate up here, where you might want to do something in your title. Come up with a naming scheme that's consistent. Uh, for your team as well. Think of it like post-it notes, right? If you were doing this with post-it notes, you could come up with a way to do whatever you needed to do just by writing it differently, using a different color of note or folding the corner over. And right? there's all kinds of things people do when they're working together on an agile wall. And it's a similar idea here. Um, this is the way that they've kept things very consistently through the process with Planner as they've been developing this tool. Is you just give you a couple of places that are very, um, very flexible, very simple and flexible for you to add those custom pieces of metadata. So hopefully that helps. Any other questions you can think of, whether it's about stand-up meetings, whether it's about planner, both together, right? happy to help. Feel free to type in that Q&A panel. We've got just a minute or two left that we can do. Again, I would like to mention that you're not on your own with these things too. We mentioned earlier let me drag myself out of the way here. Okay. The planner tab over here on the right, uh, you should find, since your company is a customer for Visual SP, you should find that those types of information are available over here. So there's the overview tab, the use planner organization, the planner quick start. Um, here's the webinars we were talking about. By the way, you'll find similar things in other applications here as well. So we mentioned things in Teams. We mentioned Power Automate today. Um, those things have the Visual SP help over here on the side as well. And all of them are meant to be a quick answer. It's not like a course you have to take. What we're doing today as a webinar is much longer than most of these help items. Most of them are very quick. Like this one is how do you search? It's going to point out that filter up here where you would find that. Right? So a nice quick answer as to how do I do something, whether they're interactive like that or maybe something that's a little more thorough, like a Microsoft documentation article here. 
Well, that brings us right up to the end of our time. No more questions in our panel. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you next month.